Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2016 North American LCS Spring Championship Finals. Riot Games faced a bit of a controversy at the NALCS Spring Finals in Las Vegas this year when the audience was so loud that the audio was actually going into the microphones of the players and creating communication issues for the teams. Yet somehow, by the time Summer Finals rolled around in Toronto, things had changed. It's such a loud arena here. For, so what was that like for you? Um, well, I want to say that Riot did a like, pretty good job of uh, the new headsets that we have and new like technology or whatever they did changed it so we don't hear the crowd as much. So that, w that was really nice uh, compared to like last finals at Vegas. It was really difficult, especially in like, team fights and stuff. But yeah, this, this time was a lot better. So obviously that raised questions around how Riot was able to solve the problem in such a short time. And it turns out they did so by borrowing some technology from traditional sports. And in New York at Madison Square Garden this year, I had a chance to sit in Faker's chair with speakers surrounding me before the matches start to experience what it's like when the audience is that loud and also how this technology works actively during that time. And by the time I got to Los Angeles, I had a chance to talk to Nick Troop, the live producer at Riot Games who was tasked with solving this issue to learn a little bit about how this technology works. Let's take a look. So Nick, uh, you talked to me a little bit about the audio issues you guys ran into at Vegas. Yes. You want to give me the full breakdown on how you guys solved that? Yeah, sure. What we've done over the last several months is introduce a number of different measures. Uh, we started with uh, changing out the headsets because we wanted to provide uh, a clearer uh, microphone signal basically so that everybody just sounded better to one another. Uh, from there, we started to make some minor modifications around how that the audio signal is processed. Uh, and then the last step was to introduce something that we jokingly refer to as Skynet, which is uh, a piece of hardware that essentially uses machine learning to differentiate between good and bad noise. So the Skynet stuff is super fascinating to me, and I, I did have a chance to experience it at Madison Square Garden, but can you give me an idea of what this uh, you know, codename Skynet stuff is? Uh, this is uh, a third-party uh, entity who uh, is commonly used in broadcast environments. Uh, so uh, whether it's uh, football games, hockey, baseball, basketball, a lot of times the on the court, on the field uh, broadcast personalities, their microphones are being protected by this same equipment as well. So it's a vendor that we found from the, the broadcasting world and are utilizing some of their equipment. So this is a link between sort of the sports world and sort of the technology issues they deal with in terms of communication. And not only do they have that issue in, in a lot of traditional sports, but you guys are using that technology to solve issues that you guys are finding in esports. Yes, that's correct. It listens to the environment and consistently learns more about what the environment can do, whether it's certain types of frequencies, like if, if uh, there's a lot of shrieking in the crowd or if there are audio cues that are a higher frequency or if the crowd is prone to stomping their feet or roaring. It starts to understand not only the decibel level, but the frequency range that the building uh, exhibits, essentially. And so it takes what it's being fed, which is the microphones that each of the pro players are wearing in their headsets, and directly takes what comes out of the microphones as good noise because it's built around protecting human speech, uh, and then defends against, quote unquote, defends against uh, the noise that the building is generating. So it, just to use a, an example, everybody knows TSM chants are always a huge thing at a league event. Yes. Uh, so if the, if the system heard TSM chants, it sounds like it would actively learn what a TSM chant is and filter that out. Is that true? Uh, in, a, in a sense, yes, right. actually. So we, we introduced this in the, uh, the semifinals in studio before the North American Summer Finals in Toronto. And uh, right away, we heard uh, TSM chants right at, the, right at the top of show. And I was eavesdropping from the back to understand what the equipment was doing. And it basically went T, and then the S was quieter, and the M didn't exist. And then the chant was invisible on headset uh, from there. That is, that is amazing to hear uh, that it can learn so quickly. Yes. Now I know this is all a little confusing, so Riot actually sent over the clips that I listened to on stage. In this first clip, you'll experience what it's like to be Bjergsen at the NALCS Summer Finals without any headphones. Now as you can hear, it is crazy how loud the audience can get when they're all super excited about it. And this next clip, we actually have what it sounds like when you have the headphones on and the technology working. Now, as you can tell, it is very hard to even hear the crowd at this point, and the only thing you're left hearing is the pink noise that they're actually pumping into the headphones for competitive integrity reasons. Now, speaking of competitive integrity, you may have wondered what the deal was with those shield booth looking things that they had at uh, World Finals. I actually did have a chance to talk to Nick as well about those. 
Now, as we speak uh, behind us at finals, I have to ask you about something very interesting that I'm seeing on stage after years of fans talking about booths and sort of comments around from Riot about how they might disrupt sort of that that player or, or fan and player interaction. I am seeing something that looks suspiciously like an open air booth behind me on the floor. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? Uh, sure. Well, I guess uh, jokingly, I would say that if it's open air, it can't be a booth. Okay. Uh, but but in all seriousness, uh, as fans will see when we get on the air, uh, we're, we've changed the layout a little bit for this show in order to allow for some very fun and very interesting uh, means of consuming the show and the competition today. In order to do that, we had to move the players further apart than we normally do. Uh, and so in order to protect against them being able to see the screens and therefore see what's happening in the game from an observer perspective, we had to find some means of blocking their view. Now, what fans will see is what we are referring to as a competitive integrity shield. And while I'm aware that that's very buzzwordy yeah. and, and that competitive integrity is uh, something that at times the community doesn't necessarily enjoy that phrasing, um, it, it is, for internally, it's how we think about anything that can jeopardize a fair and honest game. Right. And so uh, once we realized that we had to do something to obscure the player's view of the screens, we needed to take steps to mitigate what it might do from an audio standpoint. And so built into the shields is uh, three inches of professional sound insulation that oh, okay. you see in recording studios or things like that. And then over the top of it is um, uh, a multi-textured foam that breaks up the echoes. So when sound comes into it, a lot of that sound is being absorbed by that three inches of foam. And what's returning off of it is broken up. So there's not just these huge waves of sound that roll off and hit the players. Uh, additionally, uh, the, the microphones that we switch to are uh, unidirectional. So the closer the microphone is to a player's mouth, the, the less it's capturing from a sort of field of view standpoint. So the sound, any sound that does happen to come off the inside of the shield, the microphones will not capture. Nick, there are fans filtering into the arena behind us, and I can't wait to watch the game. So I want to thank you so much for talking to me. This Absolutely. is really fascinating stuff.